For his next multiverse release, McFarlane heads to Themyscira. Here's your look at the DC multiverse. This is the Wonder Woman 1984 Wonder Woman. From Amazon Princess to the world's greatest warrior, Wonder Woman is at the height of her power but living a quiet life as a Smithsonian curator Diana Prince. Her compassion for mankind is strong despite man's flaws, but now she must again draw on her incredible strength, courage, and wisdom to battle against her greatest foe, the Cheetah. Before we get a closer perusing of Diana Prince, first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. These are now starting to circulate, at least here in Canadian stores. I found this as well as the gold armored Wonder Woman at my local EB Games. So happy hunting if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself. According to my trusty tape measure, you're looking at Wonder Woman from 1984. Not that we traveled that far back in time, but certainly based on the movie Wonder Woman 84, you're looking at the figure standing 7.3 inches in height. And that in centimeters works out to be an 18.7 centimeter tall figure. Next, let's have a look at some stuff. Specifically, the stuff that comes included with the figure. The first thing she comes included with is that same cardboard trading card that comes included with all the figures. Although, of course, the image on the front will, won't be Wonder Woman for, with every single figure release. But this is a pulled screen grab of one of the press images that they used early for Wonder Woman from 1984. Looking forward to seeing where they're going to go with this particular film. And hopefully, again, Cheetah delivers. As of right now, I feel a little uneasy about the way that she's looking. I'm sure she's probably going to become a little feral later into the film. We'll just have to wait and see. Nice image of Gal Gadot there. Meow. And then on the back, we've got ourselves the stats for Wonder Woman, specifically pulling this from the source material of Wonder Woman 1984, a film released in 2020. Let's hope that still be the case. Real name is Princess Diana Themyscira and Diana Prince. A uh, height is five foot ten, and a read up that I read at the beginning of this review. A nice, again, thick card. I always like the fact that they include these. And just in case you are curious yourself, what is this guy doing with all these cards he's collecting? Well, answer to your question, member of the mob, I'm sliding these into a protective sleeve and I'm keeping them like I would keep all my other trading cards. I do like the look of these. So it was nice the fact that we do get stuff like this. Things that also have carried over from previous uh, McFarlane movie McFarlane multiverse figures. I'm set still stuck with McFarlane movie maniacs. Hopefully we see that down the road. But familiar sights nonetheless for the McFarlane multiverse figures, another MM, you get yourself the circular display stand featuring the DC logo, not necessarily embossed, but more simply just printed down below. Has one singular peg, and that will fit, of course, on the underside. Yeah, yeah, on the underside of her foot. You guys are all very smart. So you have that as well. She does also come with two variations of her lasso of truth. One more wrapped up, uh, tied up, and all ready to be compacted and displayed on the side of the figure. One good thing is at least about the figure is that she does have a hook located on the side of her belt. Well, I guess the top of her skirt, and that just slides into place like that. Without looking actually at the source material, I don't know if actually this loop should be gold. I feel like it could probably be of closer to black or brown because it just looks like it's simply a continuation. I don't expect them necessarily to go ahead and start painting gold on this into a black, but I just think maybe adding a little bit of that black there would probably just break up all the amount of gold that's happening right, right there between the Wonder Woman emblem on the top of her skirt and of course the gold coloring of her Lasso of Truth. That's one way that you can display it, of course. Then she does come with the other version of her Lasso of Truth. We'll just put the figure down here for a second. Don't worry, we'll come back to it. She does also come with this one. The only thing that's really missing is lightning that she can swing. I can't believe it. Wonder Woman's swinging on lightning. That's incredible. Looking forward to how, seeing that, how that's going to play. Is that how she's traveling from place to place? Just hop on to a lightning bolt and fly your way across the sky. Kind of like the little prince who would latch onto a star. Uh, Diana is instead latching onto the lightning. Did I just use a little prince reference? Boy, am I old. The Lasso of Truth in the longer version is still done in what looks to be a just casting of gold plastic. I don't think this has been actually painted. 
Instead, it's just been, like I said, done with gold plastic. It's looped in such a way that you can just, you can fit it in between her hands. It kind of gives her somewhat of a handle. Not the tightest of handles, mind you. You can also fit it this way as well. But it does sit a little on the loose side. Because she doesn't come with a sword, and she doesn't come with a shield, and she doesn't come with other things that maybe these hands could have been suited for instead, I actually would have probably closed the grip a little bit closer to the palm just so it was a tighter grip when she was holding the lasso of truth. Now, again, you could probably have looped it on this side, but I think that's a little bit more ridiculous. I would group more the wrapping of the lasso of truth on this part of her hand. I guess you could probably put these together to thicken. Nah, it's still about the same. But she does come with this as well. Probably going to be displaying, I think, the figure, just because this doesn't have a wire frame to it. It just sits and flops about. Probably just end up displaying the figure with the wrapped up lasso located on the side of her belt. Just don't make the mistake of displaying her with both things. Any novice fan of Wonder Woman barely knows anything about the character will probably walk into your collection room and say, wait a minute, I thought she only had one lasso of truth. And you would immediately say, wait a minute, I thought you were a novice of Wonder Woman. Yes, I am, but everybody knows she only has one lasso of truth. Shock and a drop of silence fills the room. Anyways, we're going to put that to the side and we'll have a look at the figure. I like the fact, again, she comes with two lassos of truth. Would you pluralize that? I don't know. Looking at the figure's head sculpt, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I mean, I'm looking at it, and then I'm looking at the source material, the image of the box down below. And it's pretty good. I think from a side especially, I think it bears some strong likeness to Gal Gadot. Now, obviously, we should talk and address the elephant in the room. I don't understand why specifically McFarlane went the route of sculpting a decent-looking likeness of Wonder Woman, and yet then go went ahead and colored her hair brown. It seems so perplexing when I got this out of the packaging. I mean, I already knew what I was going to be expecting, but I didn't realize it was going to be so brown. I guess I could probably just go in with a paintbrush very carefully and paint the hair black. But I mean, while everything else is pretty on point for this Wonder Woman, it's very strange, again, that they went with the decision of brown. And not only just one brown, there's a couple of different shades of brown, darker and slightly lighter over top of that. The hair is good, and again, like even if you look at it from the side, it is one of the better Gal Gadot Wonder Woman likenesses that we've gotten. I mean, even from both sides, it looks pretty good. But again, I just don't understand why the hair has to be brown. I mean, again, it should be black, or really a dark, dark, dark brown. No, we're just gonna stick with black. Going to her face sculpt, though, it seems a little on the round side, but other than that, I think it's a pretty good likeness of her. It feels like there's a little bit more rouge happening on her cheeks. I would have maybe pulled that back slightly, but I'm pretty overall happy with how this one turned out. Again, you have the tiara on the top of her forehead done in a nice metallic gold coloring that shares the same gold that happens to be in the rest of her body, the bracelets, the bottoms of her gauntlets, and of course the area around her skirts. Because this is Wonder Woman from 84, it seems like they pulled more vibrant colors than perhaps the Batman v Superman version of Wonder Woman or Justice League Superman or Justice League Wonder Woman. That would be a much darker color than what we actually get here. I actually kind of like the idea that we get a very bright ruby red bright, vibrant gold, and a very solid, decent-looking blue. I like the coloring of that blue. Just because the colors are still bright doesn't mean the details get lost. I feel there's a quite a bit of, of good stuff happening here, both the, the uh, sculpting of the armor, for example, in her bodice, as well as the texturing that they were able to incorporate in the skirts, are all, again, top-notch. Areas which you could, of course, start pinpointing as being problems with paint. Boy, I just did a whole lot of peas there for a second. I like, for example, the trim of the gold at the bottom of the skirt. That would be certainly problematic. It does seem pretty quite clean, actually, when you look at it. I don't have real any issues with the paint at all on this particular piece. Blue and gold are two combinations of colors where really, again, bleeding could always be a potential problem. But again, I don't have any issues with the paint at all. Of course, she does have her gauntlets done in silver, trimmed nicely also in that same metallic gold. And then she does have the wrapping that sort of fills in and serves the purpose of not quite gloves, but just kind of gives her a little bit more of that warrior look that she's had again over the course of the uh, the two, I guess, other appearances that she made, Batman v Superman, uh, Justice League, and of course her standalone film that would give us a total of three. 
She does have slots in the sides of her arms, and I thought for a second, would it have had something to do with the fact that the lasso could fit into that, just sort of giving her a brace? But that's not the case. I was just kind of spinning more than what was actually there. Again, I'm really overall happy with how this one turned out. Then we kind of get down to the legs, which because of the way that the sculpting is on the sides of her shoes, if you can see it right there, the shoes don't look half bad, really, but until you like look at them from the front. Because unfortunately, the gold hasn't been painted on the inside, and I know it's just simply because it's a, such a small detail, on the side it doesn't look too bad. When you look at it from straight on, because it shares the same coloring as this, the coloring of her ankle, it does make her ankles therefore look a little thick. I could probably go in there. Now this would be even bigger of an issue to try to paint in, but if I could paint in those areas of gold, I know it sounds like I'm going in and having to fix up some of the errors that I'm finding here, but if that gold was only just added to the sides there, it would really pull away from the idea of the legs and the ankles specifically looking so thick. Uh, for the coloring on the figure, like I said, overall, it's just short of the hair being an issue that, again, just doesn't make any sense to me why they would have done this the root of brown instead of black. It's a well-executed, well-painted, and well-sculpted figure from McFarlane Toys. Let's have a look at her articulation. Her head rotates back and forth. Now, you know, you know, by now, this stretch of the game, anytime you have a figure that has plastic hair, as long as a female figure like Wonder Woman would be, of course, that's going to impede what you can actually do when it comes to her head rotation. I mean, again, look at the likeness on that. Perhaps I am wrong, but I would say it's definitely one of the better Wonder Womans that we've gotten. It just, it's disappointing, again, that the paint sort of lets it down, specifically more so in the hair than anything else. Anyways, like I was saying, though, the head does move up and down. Uh, you can rock it also slightly back and forth because the hair is a slightly softer plastic. She does also have these shoulders that allow the arms to hinge out at a full 90 degree angle. And not only does it have that, but it does also have that cop socket joint located on the inside of her shoulder. Just kind of gives extra clearance to move those arms a little further forward. I like the way that they've done it. It, didn't, it kind of bothered me a little bit more so when we were looking at, say, for example, the animated treated figures that McFarlane handled from McFarlane Toys, the movie Maniacs, the, there I go saying movie Maniacs again, the multiverse figures, like the animated series Batman, specifically the John Stewart Green Lantern, had the same socket joint, but it seemed to really dominate and destroy the sculpting of the torso. Wonder Woman's is much smaller, and it certainly doesn't take anything away from the sculpting of the rest of the torso, so I like that. The arms do rotate all the way around. Uh, she does have a swivel at the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, so that's good. I mean, she can literally, I guess she could pat herself on the back if she wanted to. That's a strange way to display your figure. Uh, she does also have a hand rotation all the way around, which does rotate, like I said, and you can also hinge that back and forth. While you are hinging it back and forth, just be a little bit careful, though, because that joint is so close to the gauntlet. As you see, it does have a little bit of resistance working against it. So when you do move the hand forward and back, I do feel like it sort of looks like it's wanting to separate the joint. I seem to have that same issue on this side as well. So just be careful, because again, that gauntlet is really, really close to that joint. If they had brought it out a little bit further, allotted for the fact that you can move the hand then back and forth, it would then result in her hand looking like it was much longer out, or the arm was longer out than it should. So it's unfortunately one of those sacrifices that they had to make that really does limit then what you can move for her hand. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can still rotate her hand all the way around, that's not so much the issue. But moving it back and forth is sort of more so where you're getting the limitations happening. She does also have an upper torso ball joint, a lower torso ball joint, her legs split out, and because she is using a soft, good soft plastic for her skirting, it does allow for quite the clearance when it allows you to hinge the legs out. You can't quite pull off a full splits. I don't understand why you would want to anyways, but uh, you do get quite a bit of range happening in her legs. Forward and back on the legs as well, there's basically just to show you how everything is jointed together. There you go. Uh, she does also have a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, but not really much, though, so be careful with that. Double hinge on the knee. Um, she doesn't have any articulation in the lower leg, but then she does have articulation in the foot. You can rock the ankle back and forth. You can hinge it up and down. You can rotate it all the way around, and then she does also have toe articulation. That's always a nice touch as well. 
Just to wrap up shop and close up things for the night, you can see that she does also have peg holes in the undersides of her feet, so most definitely if you want to make use of this display stand, you just attach whatever foot you decide to go with, attach it to the peg, and you've got yourself Wonder Woman. Now, yes, you can be a little bit more crazier with her pose than what I'm currently doing right now, but overall, again, nice looking Wonder Woman when it's all said and done. Is it perfect? No, but the head sculpt is pretty good and it has elements to it that could make it, not short of it falling over, of course, could potentially make it one of the better Wonder Womans that we've actually gotten before. It's again, just strange and perplexing when I think about it to look at the figure, like I said, I'll just get the legs to bend there straight, to look at the figure like this and think that it hits and checks all those boxes off and then doesn't deliver on the proper coloring of her hair. Maybe in Wonder Woman 84, she actually sports more browner hair, but as far as I know, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman sports a very dark mane of black. And yet for some reason, McFarlane decided to go brown on this particular release. Yes, I could go in there and fix it with paint, but it probably should have been black, I feel, in the first place. Since actress Gal Gadot taking the role of Wonder Woman to say that we've gotten ourselves a fair share of Wonder Woman figures, I'm sure is an understatement. We've gotten a lot from different companies, and each company seems to approach the likeness a little bit different, resulting in still not quite that perfect likeness of Gal, if you ask me. Come along here is McFarlane Toys outing in their attempt and approach to at least do a Gal Gadot likeness, and I think it's one of the better ones that we've gotten. Dare I even say it's one of the best likenesses that we've gotten in a smaller scale figure. That being said though, despite all the praise I can make about the sculpting, the paint, and the execution of the figure, it lets down in one department, and it's the department that you probably see the most right now in here in Final Looks. It is her hair. Again, I don't understand why, maybe a miscommunication between the head office and the paint department as to what color Gal Gadot's hair actually should have been. Her hair is closer to black, if not being black. And yet, for some reason, when they had decided to approach Wonder Woman from the 1984 movie, unless she has lighter hair in the movie, it seems the same color. Her hair actually should be a dark black, and not so much brunette. Despite that, I'm still happy with how this one delivers all the things I would hope for a Wonder Woman to be, super poseable, as again, good sculpting. I think the likeness, like I said, is really good on this one. It just disappoints in the hair department. And if I could be an, a skilled artist with a fine, very fine paintbrush, a little bit of black paint, and a whole lot of luck, maybe I can actually paint the hair to resemble a little bit closely what I feel Wonder Woman's hair should be, a black and not so much a brown. Still, though, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And again, if you guys are in the market to pick up this one for yourself, she should be circulating now in Canadian stores. She's been circulating around a lot in U.S. stores for the longest of times. Finally managed to pick this one up for myself, and I'm very happy with how this one turned out. What do you guys think of the new McFarlane Toys Multiverse Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman 1984? Let me know down below in the comments section whether you guys picked up the figure or based on this review and this review alone. Also, we're going to be having a look at the gold armor Wonder Woman that's going to be coming up in the next review or probably within the next several reviews. We're going to be having a look at that one. And again, if you are new to this channel, digging this guy's content and like to stay on board and see how far this train will take you, might I re recommend that you uh, select choosing hitting that subscribe button i just add a whole bunch of words there and why don't you also move on over to the bell notification you can hit that as well and stay tuned because there's gonna be a lot of reviews coming your way as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time